Greetings to all my fellow watch enthusiasts on YouTube and Facebook and wherever this video might be seen and shared. Celine Driver once again bringing you another unboxing and review of a watch that is mine. Uh, this is a uh, watch, obviously you can see it's from Omega that I've had my eye on for quite some time and the opportunity finally arose to um, pick one up at a very good price uh, even though it was previously owned it looks like it's literally never been worn it's in fantastic shape and it came in a box that is absolutely huge I mean for comparison there's my hand <laughs> this is a big box I've had to actually switch camera perspectives so that I can properly show the box and I'm going to try and get the box open here. I don't think I can do it with one hand. Um, well, I'll put it down and be right back. Okay, now that I've got the outer box open, it's over here. The inner box is also huge. <laughs> and it comes in two levels. Uh, the bottom level is actually a drawer which you push in and it's spring-loaded and you open it up and there's your paperwork in here you have your certificate of authenticity which shows that this is watch number 128 out of 2017 is a limited edition and gives you some verbiage about the X33 Regatta ETNZ limited edition. You also have your little leather wallet with your warranty card and your pictograms. And down there you have a very large, in terms of thickness anyway, instruction book in multiple languages which you will need for this watch. This watch is very complicated to run through all its um, functions. And you just shove that back in and it clicks in place. Inside, you have the Omega logo. You have this uh, sticker kind of thing and then you have the watch itself. Now, I'm going to switch perspectives one more time and just show you the watch, so I'll be right back. Okay, now that I switch back to my normal uh, perspective, I also forgot one other thing. This watch did come from an eBay purchase. It did go through the authentication process, which this is the second time I've had a watch go through the authentication process, and it was... Uh, really good for peace of mind for a watch that uh, you know you spend a decent amount of money on to have a, uh, a third party authenticate the watch that uh, you know it is what it's supposed to be and so on. But here we have the um, Omega Speedmaster X33 Skywalker Regatta ETNZ big mouthful of verbiage. Uh, this was built to celebrate the uh, Emirates Team New Zealand ETNZ, um, America's Cup entry um, in um, 2017, hence the number of watches that are made in this run. America's Cup, uh, briefly, for those of you who may not know, is a uh, yachting race that uh, occurs, I think, every four years that for the longest time was dominated by uh, U.S. teams until I think there was a breakthrough a few decades ago by uh, a New Zealand team who finally took the cup away from America. They won it back. It swaps between different uh, countries and teams now and is, you know, ain't the most exciting sport in the world in my not so humble opinion, but you know, some people like this stuff and uh, hey, whatever floats your boat. 
No pun intended. Anyway, this is number 128 in the line of uh, 2017 watches. And as I said, I picked this up from a gentleman on eBay uh, at, a, at, at a very good price and uh, have been wearing it for quite a while. It's a beautifully done watch, as most any Omega watch is. And you can see the artwork on the back is unique to this watch. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit. And what's Team New Zealand? There's a logo, and you can see that this is number 128 of 2017. And the ETNZ was a challenger for the uh, 35th America's Cup in 2017. Beautifully done watch in grade 2 titanium. It has a bi-directional, ratcheting bi-directional bezel. It's laid out in a dive style slash regatta style uh, uh, timing. The first 20 minutes are laid out in, in a special, the uh, first um, 15 minutes are laid out between these two stars uh, to serve as a countdown timer of sorts for uh, the start of a regatta. Usually, uh, I mean, obviously with sailboats, you can't line them up and then start them. They usually circle around a, a specific part of the course near the starting line for between 10 and 15 minutes. And then they line up and they try and time it so that when the regatta starts, they actually pass the start boat, if you will, that demarcates the starting line. The watch is an analog digital watch and uh, as people who know me know I love analog digital combination watches it has four pushers the red one here being the quote unquote primary pusher the crown doesn't act like a a crown per se setting is usually done with with plus and minus buttons as it were um and you use the crown to cycle between functions and even between pages, quote unquote pages. But I'll cycle through the uh, functions in a moment here. As we're looking right now, the, um, the, the watch is displaying um, what you would call local time, local to me being East Coast of the United States. So you have the hands are set to local time and usually stay that way. The center display indicates T1 in this case because you can track three different time zones with this watch. And I'll show you that in a moment. The lower display indicates the time in military time, um, of, you know, in this case, military local time. The upper display is day in this case is uh, laid out laid out in the European manner, which is month, which is day, month, year, whereas we in America usually lay it out month, day, year. Uh, in this case, because I'm shooting this video on September 9th, uh, it's it's showing nine nine twenty three. But if I was shooting this at a different time, it would show a uh, different day. It would show. Um, 9-10-2003. So you use the crown, and this is not going to be a complete demonstration of all the functions and how they work. I mean, there are there is a pretty good size manual for that, and there are videos out there for that. Uh, one function I can show you real quick is the backlight for the digital. I'm pretty sure it'll show up even in this light. You push this button in, and you can see that the digital lights up for five seconds and then goes dark. Now, the crown, as I said, is used to cycle between functions. In this case, I'm at T1, time zone one. If I push in, I go to time zone two. Now, I've set this time zone for 
Venice, Italy. Uh, there's a reason for that that I'm not going to go into right now, but you can see that the upper uh, indicator is still at 9.9. I've switched to T2, and you can see that I am at 18.31 in seconds because Venice, Italy is six hours ahead of uh, where I am in Florida. I could cycle to the next function, which is a countdown timer for a regatta, and it's set to five minute countdown. And you can see the hands do their little dance to indicate a five minute countdown. Now, I'm not gonna turn that on because that creates a whole bunch of havoc in the watch. I, I, I believe I believe me on that, you just have to believe me. The next function is a log book and there are two log books. There's log book A and log book B which can log um, race times. And you can see the hands went back to local time. There's, uh, and then there's UTC or Greenwich Mean Time. And you can see that UTC, the display switch again, the upper display now shows you the number of days of the year that have elapsed. September 9th is the 252nd day of the year. The middle display obviously says UTC. The lower display shows the UTC time, which is 1600 hours, 32 minutes, or 33 minutes now, which is about four o'clock or 4.30 but it's showing it in military time. You press again and you're back to T1. But there are other functions. Now, if you press and hold, you go to page two. Now I have a chronograph and I can start the chronograph and you can see hundreds of seconds, seconds, minutes, hours, and you're still keeping local time. If you stop and then reset and continuing on page two, you have a countdown timer, TMR, and then two alarms. And back to chronograph. Now, if I press and hold again, I'm back to page one of the functions. And you can see T1 again. So a lot of functionality in the watch. It um, it really made it would it, it would make a great travel watch. In fact, I'm going to be taking several trips in the near future, and I will most likely be wearing this watch. You can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist on in my wrist shot. It fits beautifully, it's very comfortable. It is a good size watch, but it does wear very well. As I said, this is a full titanium case, grade two titanium, titanium clasp with the um, Omega, famous four by Omega, fold over clasp with the double push button deploy. And it guides the tail of the strap underneath the clasp for a very clean look. As you can see, it does add a little thickness, but it is a very clean look. And you have these little riders here to keep the, uh, to guide the strap and keep it flat. The strap is leather lined on the underside, calfskin to be specific, and then nylon with a contrast stitch on the top. And it, it, obviously the blue of the stitch matches the blue of the, of the uh, underside and the blue of the uh, inner bezel and the bezel around the uh, middle display. And the red on the uh, primary pusher matches the red on the minute hand. So it all integrates very well. Now, as to the uh, statistics of the watch, of course, this is uh, an Omega watch. It's going to have an Omega complication, uh, either complication, um, caliber in it. And this is Omega caliber 5620 quartz. 
uh, with a 24 month battery life. I'm not sure if it's 24 months with caveats or whatever, but I'll worry about that uh, when the battery dies. Sapphire Crystal, as you would expect at this price point, it is slightly, ever so slightly domed, but pretty, pretty flat. Um, bi-directional bezel, I already showed that. It is a perpetual calendar, as you would expect a quartz watch to be with a perpetual calendar. You adjust it and it automatically adjusts for leap years. You will have to adjust the watch for daylight savings time, which will be a bit of a bear. It is a 45 millimeter diameter case uh, with a 20 millimeter lug. It's a little small for a 45 millimeter. Usually you see 22 or even 24 millimeter. It does help with the overall wearability of the watch. It keeps the lugs narrow and short. 48 and a half on the tip to tip and 15.1 millimeters thick. It is not a thin watch, it's not a dress watch, but then again, you have other Omegas or other watches to be dress watches. Here's the only silly slash stupid thing about this watch. This is, as we've established, a regatta watch. Yes, no? That means you're going to be around water uh, if you're wearing this watch as a spectator on a boat or maybe as a participant in a, a regatta race, right? Right. What do you think the water resistance is on this watch? No, not 200 meters. No, not 100 meters. 30 meters. 30 meter water resistance. That means that you do not want to get this watch wet, especially if it's with a quartz module in it because that'll just short the watch out and turn it into a very lightweight paperweight <laughs> uh, don't get this watch wet these pushers are not sealed this crown is not a screw down crown it is a sign crown but it's not a screw down crown this watch is not water resistant I wouldn't even want to get this thing wet washing my hands and in my notes I already went over all the features of the watch all the functions I didn't miss anything I promise you that. But they sell different versions of this watch. They actually sell a watch uh, like this that is meant to be an astronaut's watch. Instead of uh, a regatta countdown timer, they actually have mission timers, meaning if you get shot in the space, you can time the mission. They even have one of these, they call it the Mars timer. It has a Mars red bezel. It looks very much like this one. Um, and that one will actually have in it, uh, according to reputation, I haven't seen this, but according to reputation, it has a Mars time zone on it. And it will keep time on Mars, which is not a 24 hour day. <laughs> uh, so I'm told. So if you want to get one of those watches before you get on Elon Musk's mission to Mars, uh, then you'll have a watch that you can buy on Earth and wear on Mars and know what time it is on Mars. Pretty cool. But I'm not going to Mars in my lifetime. Hell, I don't travel very well in the first place. Why would I want to travel all the way to another planet? Anyway, I really, really like this watch. Um, I, I, I'm glad I picked it up. I think it's a hell of a piece. Um, I've been honeymooning very hard with this watch lately. Like I said, I have some trips coming up, both uh, short trips and longer ones. And this watch is definitely going to be in that rotation because it makes a beautiful travel watch. And setting that second time zone is, is incredibly easy. Um, so it, it makes a great travel companion. Uh, you can keep track of your local time. You can set um, another time zone for where you're traveling to and still the analog hands will keep track of the local time so fantastic travel watch really <coughs> and automatically adjust the date I mean when I had this thing set to Venice Italy 
and it transitions in, over midnight in Venice. It's still six o'clock here in America. The dates change too, and you can see that. So great watch. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it to be entertaining. I hope you found it to be informative, uh, educational perhaps. If you did, click that thumbs up button for me. That does help with YouTube search algorithms, helps to bring people to the channel. And that's always a good thing. Comments, questions, suggestions down below. I do read them all. I do respond to them all. However, if you are going to try to troll me or you are going to try to insult me, or you're going to leave links to bad places on the internet, I'm simply going to delete the comment and block the commenter. There's always one. Always one. No matter what. If you're new to the channel, of course, welcome. I'm glad you found the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you uh, will take the time to enjoy other videos if you so desire. All I ask in return is that uh, please click that subscribe button and when you do, click the bell icon too, so that when I upload new videos or I do live streams, you will be alerted. And as I always say at the end of my videos, it is a crazy old world out there. It is not getting any less crazy, my friends. So please, be careful out there. Stay safe. Be well. See you soon.